Good morning. Everybody wait. Yeah, it's a great day, great week. For us weather-wise, not for everyone, but we are glad to be here today. We have done this series for a while on uh, focusing on men, okay? Well, that's over with, okay? So now we're gonna do a series and look uh, more uh, at a woman's side of things. It's on Ruth. The book of Ruth is called From Ruin to Redemption. Well, I've been burned <clears throat> right, we're to, but There we go, sorry. <laughs> From Ruin to Redemption. You know, I was thinking about this and I was thinking of how men are different than women. There were three men that were trying to cross a river, okay? And so the first one prays and said, Lord, please give me uh, enough strength to cross the river. And so, poof, he has athletic arms and athletic legs and he's able to swim across the river. The second man says, uh, Lord, please give me strength and ability to cross the river. And poof, a rowboat magically appears in front of him and he rows across the river. The third man, seeing what the others have done, prays, Lord, Give me strength, ability, and intelligence to cross the river. Poof, he turns, God turns him into a woman. <laughs> at that point, she looks at a map, walks down the bank, and uses a bridge to cross the river. <laughs> That's a dad joke, okay. And I wanna say, I feel a great victory in my spirit today because this weekend, my wife and I together put in a dishwasher and a microwave and we're still married. Yay. <laughs> yeah, and they work so far. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at uh, the book of Ruth in the Bible. It comes after Judges and it's good that it comes there because it's kind of after that time period. Today, we're looking at uh, recovering from a bad decision. How many people have made a bad decision before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of us is one time or another. And uh, we're, we're going to look at this series for a while. And, you know, everybody has different kind of movies that you like. Um, how many of y'all like action movies? Okay. What about superhero movies? Do you like that? What about scary movies? Anybody watch scary movies? <laughs> what about uh, comedies? Okay, that's a lot. What about rom-coms? Oh, okay. All right. Well, if this was a movie, it would not be an action movie because most of it is talking, okay? But it's good, and it's a ter terrific story. If you're not familiar with the story of Ruth, it's really good, and it starts off Ruth 1. I'm not going to do a lot of background. As we go through it, I will. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Now, the judges, the last judge was Samson. They were like tribal chieftains, okay? After Joshua led the people into the Holy Land, uh, they were supposed to do some things, but they didn't do it. They were supposed to completely drive out the inhabitants of Canaan. They didn't do it. They were supposed to break down the false worship sites. They didn't do that. They were supposed to pass on their faith to their next generation. They didn't do that. And they started to worship Canaanite gods. And so it was a time when people did whatever they wanted to in their own eyes, which is kind of like it is today. And so in those days is when this happened. And so it says, a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. So uh, he seeks refuge in Moab, and this is a bad decision. And I wanna talk about that in a minute. Now, if you was to look in a map, this is an ancient map. Moab is the uh, country there in the purple, okay? And it, I thought it was all desert, but it does have a small part of it that is, um, it's like, it's. Florida, okay, it's beautiful. But uh, it, today, the country of Jordan is there, okay? And the other side of Moab, the east side, complete desert. And so this is what was going on. He was going from his home, uh, which is 50 miles away in Bethlehem with his family. It says, the man's name 
was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrath, this is hard to say, Ephrathites <laughs> from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Okay, so a little bit of the etymology of the word or the names. Elimelech means God is king, which is a great name, but he does not prove to be a good leader of his family. He takes his family out of Bethlehem, which by the way, Bet, uh, that means uh, it's the house of bread. Bet is house and Lehem was bread. And so Bethlehem was like the bread basket of the country. And so they were going through a famine, but he took them out of the bread basket to go to Moab. And he didn't consult, you know, before when um, Abraham went to Egypt, God told him. God does, Limelech doesn't consult with God or anybody. He just says, okay, family, we're going. And Moab was not a nice place. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Naomi, her name means sweet and pleasant. I thought Sharon's name meant sweet and pleasant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, their kids' names, these were bad names. Malon meant sick or sickly, and Chilion meant frail or tired. So imagine naming your boys sick and tired. <laughs> Come on, you know I'm sick and tired, you guys. <laughs> that was their names, which is fitting considering what happens. Now, it says they were Pathrath sites, which is hard for me to say, Epath was the name for Bethlehem, okay? And so people from Bethlehem were called Epaphrathites. That was Israelites, Jewish people who were from um, Bethlehem. So the thing about Moab, it is a, a bad place, okay? The people who lived there, if you remember uh, back in the days of Lot, and Lot... Um, he, he fl fled from where he was, and his wife turned back and turned to a pillar of salt. And uh, at that time, they thought there wasn't any men left, and his two daughters got him drunk and slept with their dad, and that produced, out of that incestuous relationship, uh, one of the countries was the country of Moab. The other was the Canaanites, the Moabites. And so Moab... That was the, uh, the start of the country. They uh, worshiped a god called Chemos, which was not a, a good god. In fact, they believed in child sacrifice. And so this was a terrible place to take your kids. Elimelech, I don't know what he was thinking when he thought, we're going to leave God's country, because it was the middle of a famine, and they were very much a tribal society. So when things got tough, imagine when you're whatever you're part of, your church or your community, and when it was going through a crisis, you leave. And this is what he did with his family. He left. And it says uh, it didn't go well for him. Now in verse three, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. Now you would have thought if you were to read this story for the first time, Elimelech would have been the main character, and all of a sudden he dies. I thought about this a long time ago. Some of y'all don't know who Alfred Hitchcock was, but he was a great director, and he was going to make this movie. And at the time that Alfred Hitchcock was making direct movies, when you had a star in a movie, you knew they were never going to get killed. You know, John Wayne almost never got killed, except maybe in the Cowboys movie, but almost never. Well, he, he, he had this plan. He said, I'm going to get the biggest uh, actress in, in Hollywood, and we're going to kill her in the first scene which was a shock, and that's what happened in Psycho. Don't watch that movie, but that's what happened. In this storyline, Elimelech, you would never expect him to die in the first scene. He takes him to this terrible place. His family, her husband, dies, and she was left with her two sons. Now, I would have thought she would have said, okay, boys, we're going back home, because at least we got a support group there. She doesn't. Naomi stays in Moab. 
Second, bad decision. Because when you stay in a place like this, you know, you're going to adopt, you're going to adopt the mores, the values, you know, and this is what happened, I think. It says, uh, they married, her sons married Moabite women, one named Orpah, not Oprah, Orpah. But I did read that o- o- Oprah's mother wanted to name her after this person in the Bible and misspelled it, so her, it's like Oprah. And the other was named Ruth, okay? And they lived there 10 years. And so her husband dies, they get to Moab. 10 years, they live there. Her sons marry these people. They're kind of getting in with all the things that are going on in Moab. I don't know if they liked it or what, but uh, they're living there. They've adopted everything there about the culture. And it says, both Malon and Kilion sick and tired, died. And Naomi was left with her two sons, without her two sons and her husband. So she's lost her sons. This is never supposed to happen when you're a parent. I can tell you, it's never supposed to happen that you outlive your kids. She lost both of her sons and she loses her husband. Naomi is in shock. She's in shock to go through that. I can't imagine what she must have been feeling. And so she's just kind of forcing herself, I suppose, to get out of bed in the morning. You know, in that culture, to not have uh, a husband or grown sons to take care of you, you were destitute, you were homeless. It wasn't like the culture today. You had to have that part. In fact, if she went back home, she couldn't even reclaim the land that was rightfully theirs. It was very much a patriarch kind of society. But Naomi heard in Moab while she was there that the Lord had come to the aid of his people back in Bethlehem by providing food for them. So she comes to her senses. And so she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. And so they're getting stuff together, and she's just going through the motions She's still reeling from her loss, and she's trying to figure out what to do, and so she she gets together stuff, and they get together stuff. They've lost their husbands, too, so they're in shock as well. And so with her two daughters-in-law, she leaves the place where she had been living for over 10 years, and she set out. It's 50 miles, but that's a long trip for them walking. And they set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah, and she's traveling somewhere on the on the road, it would take a few days to get back. She kind of, uh, you know, refocuses, and she says, well, what are they doing coming with me? You know, we've been a family, but now that's... So Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you've shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. You've been good wives. They didn't have any children, and, and may the Lord grant each of you that you will find rest in the home of another husband. And then she kissed them in that culture. To kiss somebody was a way of saying goodbye. Okay, she kissed them. I guess it is today too, of course. And, and said goodbye, and they moaned aloud. They cried out, and they said to her, we will go back with you and to your people. But Naomi, Naomi, she thought this over now, and she said, return home. Notice, she didn't call her her daughters-in-law. She calls them her daughters, because that's what they were for. She got, you know, this is her family. She says, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons? Who, who could become your husbands? You need husbands. Return home. This, this word for return is shuv. It, return home, my daughters. I'm, am I too old? I am too old to have another husband. And then, you know, she says the obvious. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried to them? No, my daughters. You know, and she, she's got it figured out. She said, There's no way, of course, 
I could give you anything more. And so she says, uh, it is better for me, is bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. And so she felt like God has turned against her. At this, they wept around, aloud again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, and then she went off and she started a TV talk show and made a <laughs> bucket of money. <laughs> no, it's not Oprah. Op Oprah, no. Orpah, not Oprah. Oprah. Okay, got it. And said goodbye. But Ruth clung to her, held on to her. <clears throat> the first time a character talks in a story in the Bible, uh, it says something about who they are. First words of Ruth. This whole book is about Ruth. We hadn't even heard a word from her so far. First thing she says, uh, well, it's coming up, it's coming up. First, look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people, to her gods. Go back with her because she's clinging to her. And now Ruth speaks for the first time. This is what Ruth says. Ruth replied, I don't, don't, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. She uses the same word. Uh, shub. Don't, except this time, she's saying, don't turn me away. Before, the word shub in Hebrew was saying, return to your place, your country. And this, this time, uh, Ruth is saying, I'm gonna return to you, a person. And, and Ruth says this, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. She's not only saying, I'm going to be with you. This is it. I'm committing myself to you, but I'm also committing myself to Yahweh, to God, that I've learned from you. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. Which, by the way, in the story so far, Naomi's husband was buried in Moab her sons-in-laws, excuse me, her sons are buried in Moab, Moab, and that was not a good thing for Israelites to be buried outside of your country. Here she is voluntarily saying, I'm gonna go along with you. I'm committed to being there for you. Uh, I'm gonna be loyal to you. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. First time we hear of Ruth, and it's the, probably the biggest sacrificial commitment phrase almost in the Old Testament, maybe. She's just saying, look, it doesn't matter. I'm going with you. I don't care if Orpah goes back. I'm staying. I'm going to stay with you even until death. You know, there's a proverb, 1717, says this, a friend is always what? Loyal. A brother is born to help in time of need. <clears throat> Do you have a friend like that? Are you a friend like that? When maybe other people were turning their back on this person because they did something wrong, because they failed in some way, but are you still gonna be loyal? Here, you know, this lady did not do everything right. She probably could, should have gone back, but she didn't. Uh, but she has made this relationship with Ruth. And Ruth, you know, a lot of people don't like their mothers-in-law. Okay, I'm just saying, it happens a lot. Uh, not in our family, but it, it has. And uh here, she loves her mother-in-law so much, she's going to be there for her no matter what, even though that means that she may not have children and she may be homeless. She's dedicated herself. And when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped saying, don't go, don't go, don't go. You know... 
To get to the right place, you have to leave the wrong one. I think that's true. Sometimes we do things we shouldn't do. We get involved in ways we shouldn't get involved. Uh, You know, sometimes you say, look, I want to marry the right person. But the truth is right now you're, you're dating the wrong person. Before you can marry the right person, you have to break up with the wrong person. Ruth made one decision, one act of repentance, one choice that changed her life, her legacy, the course of the nation of Israel, the course of the world. Have you ever heard of Bethlehem before? I mean, every Christmas. Who was born in Bethlehem? Jesus, absolutely. And Bethlehem means the house of bread, Jesus is the bread of life, the lineage of Moab. Jesus is a direct descendant from Ruth, the woman from Moab. She is in the genealogy. This woman, you see, in the last book we looked at in Judges, we're looking at how these, you know, in charge men were trying to rule things and they were doing things and a lot of it was messed up. But here we turn to a story about these, these ladies that you wouldn't think that, that their lives were important at all. And yet in the lineage of Jesus is this woman, Ruth. You know, is there some part of your life, I wonder, that is still in Moab? Is there any decision that you could make? Is there any action that you could take that would change your trajectory of your life? What one decision that you could make, what one act that you could take to leave Moab and return to Bethlehem in your life today? It might mean cutting up some credit cards. Say, I'm gonna do away with that part. I've been, I've been taking money. I've been throwing it out the door. Amazon is at my door every day. I've got this habit. Maybe it's to apologize to somebody that you need to apologize to. Maybe it's to break up with somebody and move on. Maybe it's to block somebody on your phone. Maybe it's to block somebody in your social media. Maybe it's to confess an addiction. Maybe it's to live on less. Maybe it's to give more. Maybe it's to surrender something to God. Maybe it's to surrender someone to God. Maybe to get to the right place, you have to give up where you're doing now. Give up the wrong place to get to the right place. This is what happened here. In verse 19, it said, the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. Took 50 miles. She left with a husband and two men, she comes back to Bethlehem with one other woman. I wonder if she looked a lot different. It was over 10 years, but sometimes it's the mileage, it's not the years. She's lost her husband, lost her two sons, lived in a foreign place. Maybe she's a little ashamed when she comes back. You know, she's got land there. She owns land, but she can't have it anymore because you have to have a male heir. And so that's that's not hers anymore. She's homeless. She's coming back and somebody says, who is that? Who is that? Says the whole town was stirred because of these two women. And they exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Look at her. Did you see what she looks like? She's different. Is this Naomi? Remember Naomi? Yeah, well, what happened to her husband? I don't know. He died. What happened to her boys? Remember those boys? All they're gone. Can this be Naomi? And she's not over it, of course. She says to them, don't call me pleasant or sweetness anymore. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. 
because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Now, she doesn't end here at this emotion, but she is there now. That's okay. God knows what's going on in your life. And you might go through a time when you feel bitter. You might, you might call yourself Mara, but you don't stay there. You walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But she is being honest with them. She said, don't call me pleasantness anymore. I'm not the same woman. But God has not given up on her yet. It says, uh, verse 21, she says, I went away full with husband and boys, with a family, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. But Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite. She had Ruth, her daughter-in-law. And they arrived in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. She left when it was a famine. She comes back when there's a harvest. And I don't know what's going on in your life. Maybe somebody here, maybe one of you ladies, Maybe you got involved in a situation, maybe kind of like what happened to Naomi. Her husband made the decision, led her to that place where the awful stuff happened. Maybe you need to return. Maybe you need to shoot. Maybe you need to surrender something, return back to God. Maybe you have to leave something that you're hanging on to. You say, I want that, I want that, but maybe you know that you don't need it. And God wants you to return. I pray that you'll have the strength. And as we go through this series, I pray that God teaches us all something new about what it means to come back to him.